Welcome to Moments with Marianne. I'm so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very inspiring show coming right up with special guest, Dr. Patrick Porter, and he's here to share with us his new app, BrainTap. Now, Dr. Porter is an award-winning author and speaker who has devoted his career to neuroscience and brainwave entertainment. As the creator of BrainTap technology, Dr. Porter has emerged as a leader in the digital health and wellness field. BrainTap's digital tools and mind development apps use creative visualizations and relaxation, a biohacking technique that has made tremendous advances in helping mental, physical, and emotional health issues. BrainTap has been praised for helping people relieve symptoms associated with stress, insomnia, pain, and much more. So let's welcome to the show, Dr. Patrick Porter. Well, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. You know, what an honor it is to have you here to talk about this. I've got to ask you, like, what got you interested in this? Well, I've been doing this actually my whole life. My dad was a seminar leader back in the 70s and 80s in a process called the Silva Method, which actually used something called the Silva Sound to alter brain waves to get you to alpha. And it was a, a mechanical noise that used uh, different rhythms and cadences that would actually alter your brain activity. So I've been doing it since I was 12. So. Oh my gosh, you really had a head start, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and so uh, when you decided that you were going to become a doctor, I mean, how did you incorporate this into the work that you're doing? Well, my, my first love was actually electronics. And so I, I was involved with learning about electronics. It was nothing like electronics today. This was back in the uh, early 80s. So uh, it was very different. But when I got into um, helping my dad with the seminars and we wanted to get people into altered states, I had a chance to work for a company called Light and Sound Research out of Scottsdale. And I became their researcher. And of course, this is when we were doing a lot of research with, with sound first, but then when light came along, when the LED came along, we started matching the light and the sound together. So it's been kind of a parallel path, but sound was first because, and actually sound is more accessible to everyone because of the smartphones and the, the technology we have today is so much better than it was even back in the seventies, as far as getting hemisphere changes and brainwave activity. And it seems like we've made some really huge leaps in technology since the 70s. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, what a great time we live in. You know, when you look at the, the resources that we have that we can utilize that help us get to this place of relax. So why don't you share with us, you know, we talked a little bit about this, but what is that connection between sound and our brain and our body? Well, there's a, our brain, basically our primitive reflexes are always working for us, you know, to protect us. There's something in the brain called the reticular activating system, and it's always scanning our environment. And of course, one of those things it's scanning for is sound. You know, that's why uh, loud noises and things really can disrupt people if they're, especially, you, we all know somebody who's on edge, you know, so that's the, the part of our brain that we might not be consciously aware of. But also what we found was that music can do this. Certain rhythms and cadence, even walking in nature, hearing nature sounds and the frequency of that, it changes the way the brain works. And when you asked earlier, I should say that one of the reasons we got into this was something called the Mozart effect, which was my dad read about uh, sound healing and how it helped with learning. And now there's so much evidence out there in science that shows even if you're studying or reading a book, if you put on classical music, what they call Baroque music, from that time period, you actually are smarter. That's why they call it the Mozart effect. Your brain actually operates better if you learn in a state of alpha. Now, at first, they didn't know that was what was happening. They just thought, hey, why are people smarter, you know, if, if they learn in this environment? So that all starts to do with it. But we naturally think of all the commercials we hear. And when somebody starts or a song, if you're sitting in an elevator or riding in an elevator, and you start to hear a few bars of your favorite song, it might not resemble your song because they made it into elevator music, but it, you can still make it out because our brain loves patterns. And so sound and music is one of the great ways that our brain synchronizes those patterns. And if it's a healthy, uh, harmonious frequency or song, or, um, you know, like the broke music or new age kind of music, or we have specialized binaural beats and isochronic tones that do this, what happens is the brain hears those internally and then responds. We have a very adaptive uh, 
nervous system. And that means that our body will try to adapt to its environment, whether that's heat or cold. You know, if it's too hot, we'll start to sweat. If it's too cold, we'll shiver. But it also, even on a more subtle level, our body will respond and create neurochemicals. Our brain can release 30,000 different neurochemicals just by the activities that we're doing. It responds to nature. So this inner pharmacy that we have triggers these feel-good chemicals that actually encode memories better. So it all works together in, as far as how our body chemistry, our physiology, and our psychology working together. That's just fascinating. Well, and I know that you talk about how sound triggers body feelings as well, like when people get tingles or prickles on the back of their neck. So what is that all about? Well, our sensory system isn't, uh, our sensory hearing is not just in our ears. We actually hear through our whole body. So when we were just babies being formed in our in the womb, our skin folded and made ears, it folded and made eyes, it folded and made our nose. So our first sensory-based organ is our skin. So we're hearing actually through those sensory systems, just like we have um, receptors in our, all over our body for melatonin, for instance, that tells us when to sleep and when to wake up. We have these sensors in our skin for sound. It, again, to protect us. It's all part of our primitive reflex system. So what happens is people are really, if, because we're not used to that anymore. In fact, we're so bombarded with stimulus that our body becomes numb to it. So when we have some of these unique sounds, our body gets a feeling or a sensation that people start to like. So, I mean, when you go on YouTube, you can see people actually, you know, rubbing their fingers on <laughs> all sorts of different things, like not just chalkboards as people hear, you know, that, that makes people, you know, kind of agitated, but, but they're, they're using these sounds and it triggers different emotions. People want a, that connection or that feeling. And so it's kind of a lost art because we're so, our, our world is so full of noise that when people can isolate these different noises and the body can respond to it, you know, people crave this kind of thing. So how does sound improve our mental and emotional health? Well, the key thing is that when we're, when we're using the sound that I'm talking about, the healing kind of sounds that are out there that can in, induce states like alpha and theta, what happens is it creates acetylcholine and GABA. These are two neurotransmitters that are missing in people that don't sleep well. So if you think one in three people listening to this interview aren't sleeping well. So if it's not you and it's not me, it's the person listening. If it's you, then maybe the person listening is sleeping well. You know what I mean? So, but if one in three people aren't sleeping well, that means there's a disruption in the flow. And usually music is one of the key ways people can get out of their nervous. Uh, I call it your fight or flight brain. You know, you have this survivor brain and you have this healing and recovery, rest and recovery brain. And music actually can make that switch where some people might choose alcohol or drugs you know, we're looking for a healthy way to do that. And so people can just alter their states in just as in, you know, a lot of people might be not feeling like going to church, let's say for instance, but then they get in church and the organs playing and they smell the incense and they get into that sensory based environment. Now all of a sudden, Hey, they're relaxed. They're there. They get into it. And maybe they get something out of the service, you know, where maybe they didn't really feel like going at first, but music can put you in the mood. I couldn't imagine a movie like a, a blockbuster movie without a soundtrack. You know, that, and so we are fortunate in today's environment that we can create our own soundtrack for our life. We can choose the sounds that play in the background of our life story. And I think that's where people are missing out on. And it brings about an emotional, those, those emotions, think of our brain as our electrical system and our body as our emotional or chemical system. And these two have to connect. And music is one of the ways, you know, you can take, if you remember back when you were at a family reunion and maybe you had an uncle or aunt that wasn't really into the music, but the music playing pretty soon, you see their foot tapping and you see them moving because our bodies, our nervous system is designed to move and breathe. And, you know, when people get up and dance, they feel like they have to dance. It's because our nervous system loves that sensation and that feeling. And even if we're just sitting there listening to music, we're still moving our neurology and our body loves that feeling. It loves to move and breathe. Well, and talk about move and breathe, you know, I know you've covered a little bit of this, but can you kind of dive into, you know, just how sound improves our physical health? Well, the, the biggest thing within the physical structure is you, you can either change your psychology by changing your physiology, which means you go and you work out. You know, we all know people that they might not have been, they might have been feeling a little depressed, a little anxious, 
whatever. And then they go work out and their body starts feeling better. Well, you can also affect your physiology by your psychology. And that's where mood comes in. Mood can lift our spirit. And if we, if we do that, and it's, it's a literal chemical reaction. And that's why they, there's actually quite a few hospitals. In fact, BrainTap itself, my company is in quite a few hospitals for recovery, because if we can get people to relax, everything works better. We have one company that uses our sessions while they do um, uh, intravenous. Um, it's a, it's a application for brain for the brain while they're getting off addictions and it's an amino acid. And they found that they get 30% more absorption when people are listening to the brain tap, these specialized sessions that put them into alpha and theta. Uh, They don't have to have the brain tap to do that. You can do that with many different ways, but we showed that it actually changes the physiology of the person. So they become more receptive because when you turn on this healing brain, so many people are in, what we call a sympathetic survival syndrome. And what that means is they're in fight or flight all the time. They go to bed stressed and they wake up stressed. And especially during times of uncertainty, like we're experiencing now, people are going to be locked up because they don't have a way to go or they don't know what's what the future holds. So part of that, that resistance music can help that flow. And again, your thought process, we have a flow of, flow of consciousness. And sometimes when they have stuck states, like especially creative people, they put a little music in the background, the creative juices start flowing, they start coming up with ideas, because it unlocks that creative brain, your, your stress brain operates in a in a very chaotic brain frequency, as you slow down with the rhythms and cadence of music, you actually slow down and you start to get access to your creativity. And creativity and problem solving help to reduce and eliminate stress and anxiety. So those are the two main things I think music does for people. Well, you mentioned brain tap. So why don't you share with our listeners what that is? Okay. Well, brain tap is a tool that starts first. It's an app. And what we did is we designed an app that people can use to, uh, that don't know where to go to get this kind of training. Uh, We actually separated out into morning sessions. We call it wake up. And then we have ones that go to sleep. We call the morning ones digital coffee and the night ones, uh, you know, quaaludes, digital quaaludes. And basically the music and the tones and the frequencies are designed in such a way that the brain follows. It's called frequency following response. And then we have other sessions people listen to the middle of the day. So think of it like a guided imagery program, but we have ones that are just music. We have some that are guided imagery, but it's designed to reboot the brain, to recharge, to bring more clarity to the, to the listener, the person who's using it, because it's a training program. It's training you to do it. And then you can upgrade that if you wanted to by using, we have a headset that is also available. I mean, your listeners, if, if you wanted to share with them, they could go to, there's a, there's a free link. They could try it for themselves and there's no credit card necessary. It's on a, it, the site is gobraintap.com and there's, there's no uh, pressure. You know, they can try it. They actually also get a copy of my book, Thrive and Overdrive for free. They get to keep the book, whether they do anything at all, and they can learn about this technology. There's a whole section, section four kind of talks about the science for those listeners out there that want to see. We have a lot of science behind this. In fact, we have seven major universities right now working with us in some active. uh, The only one that's actually going now is Brazil. Brazil's back uh, in school right now, they've, they've opened up the country again and they're back doing their study, but we show how it, we're, we're actually proving out. Not only can we improve learning, but we're showing that we can lower the anxiety and stress of these students at the school, at the college level. That's the big university study we're doing right now. Oh, that's so impressive. My goodness. And I know that we've kind of hopped around here a little bit, but I would like you to get back to like what exactly sound healing is because we've got brain tap and what a great resource that is. So how does, what is sound healing and how does it work? Okay. So think of your, every cell of your body is responding to its environment. So we know that sounds can do things like harmonize cells, or they can actually, they can use sonic a high enough sonic blast to actually destroy cancerous cells in the body. They've done that. So sound can be used for, you know, many different things, but what we want to do is we want to bring about a harmonious state in the body. And this is happens through, it can be done through any medium. I mean, uh, if you think about the shaman back in the early days of America, they would do this through drum circles, you know? So when you're in a drum circle environment, anybody who's been in a drum circle knows that after about three or four minutes, you actually start making music together. 
and this has been proved out with a metronome. Uh, a metronome, for those that don't know, it's it's a tool usually used to help people learn piano or something like that. But you can take three uh, of these metronomes, put them on a stage, start them all at different times, and within three minutes, they will be synchronized. And science doesn't really understand exactly why this happens. But if you go into a clock shop in New York City or any major city, you will notice that all the clocks in the shop will be synchronized to the same time. And this happens everywhere in our universe. So music is a key to that. There's a rhythm, there's a cadence, there's a pulse to everything in our world. And again, we can, if we set the right musical tone to our life, we create these chemical reactions. So think of the electrical thoughts we have. Those correspond to an emotional reaction in our body, which trigger, this is triggered by sound. So when you're sitting there, sound alone can boost your mood. And this is done because it boosts the chemical composition in your bloodstream because it's changing. It's, it's telling the body to create these neurotransmitters and these different feel-good chemicals that are part of our natural system when we're listening to music. And then, of course, the main thing, the, how it got its fulfillment was if you wanted to heal, if you can relax somebody, you can heal much faster. There's been study after study. So if you can put somebody into these uh, using music, healing music, and maybe even sound vibration beds, because we also have beds that we've used where you can put the sound through healing, uh, these healing surfaces. So you lay on these surfaces, and there's a gentleman by the name of Dr. Emoto. He wrote a book called The Secret Life of Water. And mm -hmm. if the listeners haven't read that book, it's a very interesting book about what sound and what the, how the body responds to that. And he talks about how you actually change the crystalline structure of the body because we're 70% liquid and the water actually has memory. Uh, most people don't know this, but right now in the, in computer sciences, they are creating computer chips that store all the data on water. It's now it's structured water. So if we're made of 70% water, what kind of structure information is our body carrying? Because they know that we're 99.999% space. You know, that's what the quantum physicists would say. And But we know that sound, it's not really space, it's information. So think of sound as information that the cells of our body, and the, the exciting thing right now, we live in such an exciting time right now, because people like Bruce Lipton, who are cell biologists and things, they show that we actually can change up to 1,200 gene expressions with the sounds we choose to use. Our body turns on and off its gene expression just by what we're listening to or saying to ourselves. So it's a pretty exciting time to be here and know that we have such control over our physical makeup if we choose the right sounds. Now, I'm not saying every, I don't know if Black Sabbath or, uh, you know, some hard rock, I think that music's more for cleaning the house or something, you know, but if you're talking about healing music, there's a lot of choices out there right now that you can listen to and just don't try, just kind of do some breathing exercises and let that music wash over you. You're going to feel physically better. I've never seen it fail. So you just have to practice it. I think Black Sabbath is more for destroying a house. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. I can just envision people with sledgehammers. With that one. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, what's really fascinating is all the science that's behind this and the things that can be accomplished. My goodness. Well, you know, and I'd love for you to share with our listeners some of the things that sound therapy really helps. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, music therapy is the key. It, it, it's almost like the secret sauce that makes other things work better. Because I mean, like I said, it, could you imagine a book on tape or a movie or just riding in the car in without somebody there, unless you just like listening to yourself think? I mean, music helps us in many different ways to shift and change our mood. And it, it, since it can be like a radio station, we can choose the mood we want based on the music we choose to play like a Hollywood producer. That's what I tell my clients. I go, you have music as a tool. It's not just to, to play in the background, but you can choose the, the type of music to lift your spirit. That's so powerful. Well, and so I know on, on um, your website, it talks about it releases kind of like foggy brain. What are some of the other things that people will kind of experience when they start using this? Well, 
there's a brain wave that's called SMR, sensory motor rhythm. And that's the one that we're actually triggering. That actually has to do with your distributor system. So if somebody's out there worried about Alzheimer's and dementia and maybe their balance issues, that kind of the kind of music we're talking about here, the Baroque classical music and that listened to with earphones will actually show it will actually help your balance and it will help your cognition. You know, that's the Mozart effect we're talking about. So if you're if you want to learn better, you want to learn faster, you want to remember things, take some time out to listen to this kind of music. It's going to enhance your brain function. Uh, I think the other thing is that it helps people sleep. That's probably the biggest side benefit that people have is that they they start to offload that stress. Our bodies collect stress like uh, a capacitor electronic circuit. It holds it holds that stress until it can discharge. And unfortunately, a lot of people discharge their stress on their loved ones, which isn't good, right? Or they might do it with alcohol or drugs or something like that. I think music is a easy way. We all have access to it. You can you can get access to it. Find the one that helps you to release that pinned up stress and emotion because it just wants to flow. It's like a dammed up river and music can be the catalyst that gets the nervous system to unlock it. Well, I notice that you have different bundles with brain tap so people can work on specific things. And you've mentioned this before. So there are things like, you know, they can deal with stress. I mean, who isn't going through stress right now, right? Mm Mm-hmm. I was going to say a lot of times what we work with, like we're just coming out with a program we just finished called Chasing Greatness with Jake Pates. He's an Olympic snowboarder because we work a lot with uh, concussion care. And so he put together a program for people that are feeling the stress of competition, you know, and then we have others that are like mind over menopause. If you're going through the stress of going through menopause, we also have sessions for helping people stop smoking, losing weight, all the we have over a thousand sessions. So when, when people do go to that site for their free download, they'll get a good chance. They'll get to play with it, see if it's something that they want to do, but there's probably something there for everyone. And there's ones that are, we have one called I can series and we have a life mastery series that you don't have to have specific problems to improve or maximize brain function with sound. You can, you can, you can just improve yourself. You know, it, it's weird, but when we do studies with students, we usually find the A students are the ones that want to participate in the studies. But of course, we can't get any movement with them. We let them do it, but we're not going to get the same movement. If we have a C student, then we can show, you know, improvement. But if you have an A student, you know, there's, there's not where, anywhere you can go with that. But it seems like A students or high achievers or peak performers, they're already doing these things. You know, they're, they, already, they already take the time to do their breathing exercises, listen to music, do some kind of mindfulness meditation to music. And so what we've done is we've just made a simple way to do that, but you can do that on your own. Now, is this a way for people to go ahead and kind of start their mindful practice? Maybe they don't know what that is or what it looks like, where you get a lot of people that say, you know, I try to meditate and it never works on me. Yeah. Well, what we found in our research, which would probably blow away most people out there, but the people that have tried meditating and then failed, like you're talking about, we actually found that most people actually stress out their brain when they're meditating. That's the exact opposite that you want. But because they don't know what to do or how to do it, they don't have a technique. Instead of them being de-stressed, they're so worried about doing it correctly. Are they doing the breathing right? Are they sitting right? Are they have the right posture? You don't have to do any of that. So yeah, brain tap can be a simple way. Basically, we say press play to change. You know, just press play, put it on. The entrainment process along with the music, the brain can't help but follow you into those relaxing states. And so when you when you get that relaxation, now once you've been there, it's kind of like if I told you about Hawaii, it would be one thing. But if I took you on a on a trip there and we got to see all the waterfalls and rainbows, now every time you go back to think about Hawaii, you're going to remember the rainbows and waterfalls by being there. It's more of an experience than just a think about it. So we we believe that you have to have an immersion process to teach people how to meditate. And that's really where we focus at BrainTap is accelerating that and, and really rebooting the brain to give them more energy and more presence. Now, is there a different science that's involved in these different bundles? So if someone's using the sleep portion versus maybe like the ultimate you know, health, optimum health or weight loss, are these hitting different um, uh, notes or factors for the brain? So yeah, the difference between the the bundles is first, every session is encoded differently for neuroplasticity, 
which means the brain has to adjust to keep up. The brain loves patterns. So the first pattern is the one that we do in the morning. We have AM sessions for rebooting the brain. Those actually take the person down into alpha and theta, but then spends a lot of time in alpha and then brings them up with a high energy. So when in the morning you have the energy you need. We have about 90% of our sessions are what we call theta reboots, which means in the middle of the day, you want to reclaim 80% of the energy that you had you had lost because of the day-to-day activity. If you do one of these sessions, our, our research shows you can regain about 80% of your morning energy level. And most people say it's equivalent to three or four hours sleep. And then we have sessions that are for the evening for sleep, that are go to sleep, which don't wake you back up. The, the algorithm actually takes you down through the different brainwave patterns that we have. Uh, there's four primary ones where we're talking now in beta, then there's an alpha, there's a theta, and then there's delta, which is represents deep sleep. Your brain doesn't doesn't process out all the toxins in the brain unless you reach level four sleep during during sleep time. And you should do that six or seven times during your cycles. So if you're not getting the deep sleep that you need, then we have sessions that actually train the brain to do that. So depending upon what your brain is or what your let's say your psychological mood is or the time of day where you're listening, we have specific sessions that help with that brainwave entrainment. That's just fascinating. My goodness. Well, and you mentioned earlier that there are some, you have some tips for people that, you know, they can try at home for wellness. Yeah. Well, the, the first tip is when you're laying in bed at night, don't just try to, most people think, oh, I go to sleep right away. That probably is the worst thing you can do because we need to offload that stress. The best way to to sleep is actually when you're laying in bed, take a moment before going to sleep and just with your eyes closed, which starts alpha activity, scan your body. Recognize this is kind of a, a mindfulness way to sleep. And you just move through the different parts of your body, breathing as deeply as you feel comfortable, but just noticing any stress because once you notice that stress you'll notice that it starts to unwind and that's where they'll get those feelings we talked about the maybe the tingling sensation or the the vibrations or the heaviness feelings but what they'll do is they'll become more comfortable and when you do that you'll find that you'll sleep deeper you'll wake up more rested and more recharged and then the other thing is in the morning time the best thing you can do if you wake up in the morning is to jump out of bed do not sit there and sleep don't hit your alarm clock in fact, I haven't used an alarm clock since I was 12 years old because my dad taught me how to wake up without one. Our brain can wake us up on an up cycle at any time we want. Now, it takes practice. We call it awake control, but that's one of the things you can do. The other is most people out there are drinking other things besides water. In Our, our body is 70 to 80% liquid, depending upon the books you read, but you should be drinking half your body's weight in ounces of water each day. If they did those three things, they would see such a shift in their physiology and and it would change their mood and their psychology about life that they could then make any other big major change that they want to make. It's amazing how these small things make such a big difference. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why don't you share with us one more time? Because I know you mentioned the website and you're doing a special. Why don't you share that one more time? Yeah, if you go to go brain tap, all one word, go brain tap.com. You can get a free, um, it's a free program we put together actually for these times. And it's a 30 day free, no credit card necessary. Just go there, download it, see what you think. And you'll also get a copy of the thrive and overdrive book. So you can read about how you can improve your stressors and you get to keep the book as a gift. Uh, whether you do anything going forward or not. But it's a good way to try it out to see. And there's a lot of different sessions. You'll have access to close to 200 of the thousand sessions. So you'll have a chance to really try out a good uh, cross-section of what we have. I think that's real exciting, especially at this time where people are so stressed. Of all the bundles that you have, is there one that you see that's being used more than others? I think our wake up bundle and our sleep bundles, those are the two that are the biggest. I think people just, they don't wake up in the morning very well and they don't want to, you know, use stimulants and then they're not sleeping well. Our sleeping one time and we get about right now, about 42,000 listenings a day on our app. And I would say that uh, more than 10% of them are the sleeping series. And then the others are spread across, but um, you know, that's, that seems to be a big one. People aren't sleeping well. 
Yeah, I'm sure. I don't doubt that at all. I mean, there's so much stress going on, but what a perfect time for something like this that can help help us kind of work through these stressful times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have to have many different tools. I mean, we need to take care of ourselves physically, of course, by doing some kind of physical workout, but I think we also need the downtime. And right now, people are disengaging. And one of the things I, I should have said earlier was um, tune into the news to know what's happening, but don't be obsessed by the news. I mean, if you're spending all day watching the news, that's just that's terrible on your nervous system. I mean, because there's no hope there right now. Nobody's giving us any real we're not getting positive news right now. We're getting all negative news and we need to be aware of it, but we don't want to be consumed by it. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, it is really, I mean, stressful if you are taking in so much news morning, noon, and night. I mean, I, I, uh, I agree with you on that. I probably get like 10 minutes a day and leave it at that. Mm-hmm. Well, Dr. Porter, we can talk for hours on this topic. My goodness, you're such a wealth of information. I really support the work that you and all the folks at BrainTap are doing to help elevate people and to give them the best life possible. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Well, it's great to, great to be here and good luck with what's going on and, and with your message to the world. Well, thank you, Dr. Porter. It's been such an honor to spend this time with you and to talk about all the great work you're doing and, of course, your app, BrainTap. BrainTap's available for download at the App Store and Apple and Google Play. And if you'd like to connect with Dr. Porter, you can at his website, braintap.com, for more information. Well, we're going to pause here for a quick break. You want to stay tuned for our next special guest, Amy Newmark, the editor-in-chief and publisher of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. We're going to pause here for a quick break, and we'll be right back after these messages. Internationally recognized and award-winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. There comes a moment when you realize you're somewhere special, when you discover that each beautiful creature that you see has been rescued from a life of absolute horror and brought to this incredibly free place. Here is where their lives were forever changed and where yours will as well. Discover over 500 tigers, bears, and lions at the brand new visitor center at the Wild Animal Sanctuary just outside Denver. For more information, visit wildanimalsanctuary.org. Discover true freedom at the Wild Animal Sanctuary. Have you ever had the sense that your thoughts might actually be doing something? Ancient secrets of manifesting have been masterfully revealed in the award-winning book Manifesting 123 by Ken Elliott. For the first time, the author's experiences and stories in this book describe exactly how your thoughts can create anything. You've been doing this all your life, but it's never been fully explained for you until now. Visit Manifesting123.com for more information today. Manifesting123.com Welcome back to Moments with Marianne. We're here today with our next special guest, Amy Newmark, who's here to share with us the latest Chicken Soup for the Soul book, Laughter is the Best Medicine. While we navigate the ups and downs of life, sometimes a little levity helps. So Amy Newmark is the best-selling author, editor-in-chief, and publisher of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. Since 2008, She has published 133 books, most of them national bestsellers in the U.S. and Canada, more than doubling the number of Chicken Soup for the Soul titles in print today. She is also the author of Simply Happy, a crash course in Chicken Soup for the Soul advice and wisdom 
that is filled with easy-to-implement practical tips for having a better life. So let's welcome to the show, Amy Newmark. Well, thanks for having me on. And I have to say, when we sent this new Chicken Soup for the Soul book off to the printer at the beginning of the winter, I had no idea that laughter is the best medicine would be so relevant now. Oh, my goodness. There can be a better time than now for this book. I mean, I think a lot of people have like no clue, like at the, in you know, the end of last year, that we would be in the situation that we are right now. I really worried because we sent this off to the printer, I guess, in early February. And I mean, the book had been on our schedule for a long time. And I was, as I was sending it off to the printer, I thought, shoot, if this gets bad, this pandemic, people might not take this book the right way. And I don't want a book coming out in the middle of April to look flippant, like we're saying, oh, don't worry about it. Read this humor book. You'll be fine. Because, you know, but luckily, no, nothing happened like that. Everybody understood, I guess, that you send books to the printer months before they're on store shelves. And they also took the whole laughter is the best medicine concept the way it was intended. And it's actually the number one self-help, new self-help book in America right now. So people have really responded to it well. And I've been so grateful because with you know, so many stores closed. I was really worried about what was going to happen to my newest baby. Oh my goodness. Well, congratulations on this book being number one. And I can see why as we're all kind of cramped up and, you know, things are changing. You know, some states are opening up and we're, you know, getting out, moving around a little bit, but we're still cautious. So, you know, a good majority of people are. And so when you're stuck at home with a lot of people, you might need a good laugh or two, you know? So. Definitely. And you know, if your kids are irritating you, well, we got stories about kids being embarrassed or embarrassing their parents. If your spouse is bothering you, we've got great, funny stories about spouses. I mean, we've got everything. I know these days everybody's got like their, their Zoom stories. We've got, oh my God, we have one story where this woman, um, she kind of feels guilty, but she lets her two-year-old watch baby shark on the iPad for the umpteenth time so that she can go and grab, you know, grab a quick shower. And she's in the shower happy with her five minutes of free time to take a shower. And all of a sudden she hears this voice going, Steve, Steve. She's like, Oh my God, there's a man in my bathroom. And, and then she looks around for a weapon and all she can find is a big bottle of Pantene shampoo. So she like grabs it, you know, from the, <laughs> like from the spout end, you know, over that the, the little end and she's going to use it as a club. And then she kind of peeks out around the shower curtain and her two-year-old is sitting there with the iPad and somehow he's activated FaceTime and he's called Randy from accounting at her husband's company and so she's like, oh my God, oh, no. how am I going to get out of the shower now? It's facing me. So she like drops down, you know, to hide behind the bathtub. And her two-year-old is laughing at how funny mommy is being. And then she reaches out her arm, you know, with the Pantene bottle. And she's trying to slap the iPad out of her kid's hands and not be seen by Randy in accounting. Anyway, she finally gets the iPad off, but we don't know how much Randy actually saw And um, her husband comes home from work that night and she's like, "Um, we're moving to Wyoming, pack your things, (laughs) you know? (laughs) So (laughs) everybody's got those stories now. I was talking to my husband and I was saying, you know, we have to remember when we're on Zoom video because everybody's doing the newsman thing where you only look decent from, you know, the waist up. And I said, we stand up to go and get a piece of paper or something. And they see those pajama bottoms or worse. We're going to be really embarrassed. Oh, my gosh. You know, and that's a real focus now because as we get into these Zoom meetings and we've been doing this, I mean, you do see reporters that are wearing like shorts with their suit top or, you know, there's different background things happening that maybe the reporters don't want in the background. So, you know, we have to be very conscientious of in in a really different way than we've been before, you know. Yeah, I've gotten to the point where sometimes I'll, on the video ones, I'll, I'll say like, all right, yeah, I'm wearing this this top that actually has to be ironed, so you guys should feel really honored. 
and, but then I'll stand up and I'll be like, okay, here's the yoga pants. And then I hold up my slippers. I'm like, I at least wore my nicer slippers for you. And they do match my top, but you know, everybody's gotten so casual. I finally made my husband shave because I started calling him Santa Claus, you know, but I've never Aww. seen so many beards on people who look better without them. Oh my gosh, that's too funny. Well, and you know, and, and that this is one of the things why I love about this book, Laughter is the Best Medicine. It, you know, it's really given us kind of a little bit of a time out and just to get focused into a short story where we can have a really good laugh. And right now, I think we need that more than ever. I totally agree. And um, I feel like everybody should be giving themselves a little bit of a news cleanse, you know, and you don't really have to watch the news every day now. You basically know what they're going to say. And I think a lot of people, though, are saying they don't have the attention span to read a big book. And so what I love is that with our nice little short stories, you have 101 little story arcs, you know, 101 reasons to laugh out loud. You could spend 10 minutes reading a story and then pick up the book the next day. And I've had people send fan mail saying, I'm reading one story a day for 101 days. And a lot of people are saying, I'm giving this to my dad because I never know what to give him for Father's Day. And I know he will like reading these funny stories. Um, so, so that's been cool. And we have a lot of stories that people are really appreciating, like people who are home with their spouses and spending more time together than they ever have before. And we have so many great stories about spouses where people making fun of their spouses. And I mean, all in, you know, with very good intent, but they're just, they're, the stories are cute. Like, oh, you know what? It's almost June. So we had a great story from this guy. He got married for the second time. His name is Doug Sletton and his wife, Kyra, really wanted a June wedding. And he didn't want a June wedding because his first marriage had been in June and he just thought, bad luck. But Kyra won, as she should, the bride should win. And so they got married in June. And then a year later, it was time for Doug to acknowledge their first anniversary. And so he made a really big deal. He made reservations at a special restaurant. And then he sent her a dozen long stem red roses during the day. And then he came home after work and he was so excited about how grateful she would be and how cool he was as a husband. And he got home and she was standing with her back to him at the kitchen sink and she was totally ignoring him. And the, bo the box of roses was sitting there, but she hadn't even taken the roses out and put them in a vase. And he tried to be affectionate to her and she didn't respond. And then he asked what was wrong and she said nothing. So then he knew he was really in trouble. And then he finally realized exactly what he had done. He had sent his second wife roses on the anniversary of his first wedding. Oh boy. Yeah. I mean, there's just, there's just, <laughs> it's really great when they poke fun at themselves too. You know, that's really, really funny. Um, I thought that was a great one and like such a husband move, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm sure he had to do some fast talking, get out of that. Right. I'm sure it turned into one of her favorite stories over the years because everybody likes those, those funny stories about their spouses. I mean, we had another one, this woman, um, Irene Marin, she brought home um, like a chair from the thrift shop. She went to this thrift store that's, that supported Habitat for Humanity. And she was always bringing stuff home from there. And her husband didn't really like it. And one time she brought home a whole chair. And she just decided to put it in the room where it was going to go and see what he said. But it sat there for days and he didn't say anything. And so she thought, is he just playing with me, trying to make me nervous? Because she really wasn't supposed to bring home more pieces of furniture. And then after a while, she put a bright pillow on it just to see if that would prompt a comment from him. And he still didn't see any, say anything. So then after a week of him not saying anything, she put on a bathing suit and she sat in the chair. And when he walked past, he goes, nice bikini. He still didn't notice that they had a new chair. <laughs> That's too funny. I mean, she's trying, I, the only thing she's missing is a neon sign on that, right? <laughs> so. I mean, it happened to me. My husband will ask me these questions and I look at him like, like he had a chair incident. He had this 
awful, ugly, old, cracked leather desk chair at work. And they redid the office and his assistant really wanted that chair out of there because they had a nice, good looking chair for him. So she got somebody to drive the awful old chair to our house. And so I put it, you know, behind his desk, even though I hated it too, but he loved it. And then he came home from work that day and he went and sat at his desk and he sat in that chair for hours. And then he came out of the office and he goes to me, are we ever going to get my chair from the office? And I just looked at him like he had two heads, you know, although neither head was actually operational. And I said, you've been sitting in the chair for three hours. Oh, (laughs) it's so funny. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I mean, there's so much to touch on in this new book. I mean, I was reading, what was it? I think it's on number 39, Impressive. Is it Rachel Wagner? I think it was where she talks about getting back to Colorado and then she's going to go and do this outdoor trip with a new boyfriend, you know, and their experience probably with a bear. And it was just, it's crazy. Some of these stories, but you know what? You can't make this stuff up. I mean, this stuff is just, it's, it's funny. It's hysterical. I mean, they think they're going to encounter a bear. It ends up being probably a really big bison. She does like, all these kind of moves that work in Alaska and the Rangers telling them, no, that's actually attracting animals. So it's really interesting. Yeah. And that's why she calls it impressive because she realizes that she looked like a real doofus. Yeah. That was very, <laughs> very funny. People make crazy mistakes. Like, um, I don't know if it's ever happened to you. Like I have had a couple of times in my life that were really memorable where I've answered the phone and I didn't quite, catch who the other person was. And so I've kind of struggled and we've had a whole conversation and I'm thinking, is this one of my mother's friends? Like, who is this person? And then after 10 minutes of awkward conversation, but ladies are good at talking anyway, the person will be like, did I call the wrong number? And I'll say, yeah, I think you did, but it was really nice talking to you. But there was one, there was one in the book from this woman, Chelsea Flagg. And She, I I think she had a feeling that a lot of us get, you know, when you've gone a long time and you've just neglected some friends and now you've got to catch up and you make that list. So she sent an email out to each of these friends she had neglected and she sent one to this friend, Laura, and said, let's get together for coffee. And she hadn't seen Laura in a year. So this was long overdue. And Laura wrote back, are you sure you're emailing the right person? And Chelsea just thought, whoa, that was snarky. You know, I know I've been neglecting her, but she emailed back, yes, of course I meant you. And so then Laura sent her an email. I'll be sitting by the front window in the coffee shop wearing a green vest. And Chelsea thought, okay, that's really getting snarky, right? Of course I know what you look like. It hasn't been that long. So Chelsea showed up at the coffee shop and there's a woman wearing a green vest sitting over in the window. It's not Laura. And it turned out Chelsea had been emailing back and forth with a complete stranger. And so she walked up to the stranger and the woman shook her hand and said, I'm Lori. And Chelsea had been emailing, she thought, Laura. And so Chelsea said, I'll be back in a minute. And she went off to get some tea. And unfortunately, the line was really short. And she's like frantically scrolling through her phone, trying to figure out who is this person? And then she figured out, who she had emailed. And it was just somebody who had been on the same email list as some yoga organization that Chelsea had worked with. She honestly didn't know this woman at all, but now she, you know, had dug this deep hole. She had to sit down with this woman and have a conversation. So she sat back down with her and talked about the yoga organization. And then Lori said she hadn't been there for a year. So that was even more awkward. And then finally, (laughs) Chelsea got this great idea. And actually, I thought this was brilliant because she had to come up with some reason why she asked Lori, not Laura, for coffee. And so she told this Lori that she had made a list of really strong business women she knew, and she was trying to meet with all of them to get some some inspiration for her own life. And that sounded plausible and flattering, and it explained the whole thing away. And so, you know, Lori, like visibly brightened, because now she understood why they were having coffee. 
And then the only problem was that Lori said, that sounds great. Can you email me that list of influential business women? I'd love to talk to them too. So, <laughs> so, so Chelsea went away with this to-do thing. She didn't have a list of influential business women, women. So now she had to go and do that. So she just dug herself another hole. Well, it's interesting, you know, when we do these kind of things, we're reaching out to people, you know, and, and reconnecting with friends. I mean, a lot of that is kind of happening where we're having like oopses, but what a great opportunity to meet other people and reconnect with people. Yeah, actually I have noticed recently I'm having, we're having like zoom dinners with couples who we wouldn't actually be seeing otherwise. It's expanded the, the list a little bit of people who were socializing with, you know, so we sit there and we eat dinner and they sit there eating dinner and we chat for an hour and a half, like we're in a restaurant. It's nice. It has That's opened cool. things up. I was actually thinking about trying to set up some zoom meetings with some of the chicken soup for the soul contributors, because what I usually do in, if I have time in a summer is I'll go and I'll hit the road. It's a lot of work because we have to figure out who lives where and like, okay, which cities are worth going to. And then we email, you know, 150 people and hope we'll get 50 to show up at a restaurant. And then we schlep all these gifts and it's super expensive and they're driving in an hour or more to the lunch. And it's a really big deal. And I was thinking I could just do that over zoom. And that would, the cool thing is if we did it over zoom video, then our contributors could all meet each other and, in the past, I know from these lunches, people have actually created new writers groups, made new friends. You know, they didn't even know there was another Chicken Soup for the Soul writer in their town. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of fun to do that. Um, we do have some good, like, work stories in the book as well. You know, embarrassing work stories and not just Zoom ones, even though I'm sure if we put another one of these books together for next year, we're going to get a lot of those Zoom stories. Well, do you know what? It's interesting. I, from what I understand, you can actually hire a farm animal to bomb one of your video meetings, your Zoom meetings. So you can, you know, they have like, you know, donkeys that will show up mysteriously. You give them the, the login. They kind of make it. So it's interesting what oh, people are Oh, that's so funny. Isn't that's it hysterical. great? Oh, oh I my love gosh. that idea. It's <laughs> really, really funny. That all of a sudden have the donkey show up. <laughs> and the donkey's there. He's like, you know, you know the donkey's coming. So it's kind of fun the things that people are doing to kind of liven things up and have fun today. You know what I mean? It's like, who would think about hiring a farm animal to be on a virtual meeting? Okay. You know <laughs> so. I just realized what I could do because I was just fooling around the other day and I was using this app on the iPad called Talking Pets. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Mm -hmm. And I took the cover of Chicken Soup for the Soul Laughter is the Best Medicine. It's just a blue cover with this white alpaca face. You know, alpacas are pretty funny looking. And I put the cover into the app. And then I um, did these simple things they have you do. And I I have the alpaca now talking in this little video that I made. The alpaca is talking about the book, Laughter is the Best Medicine. I'm thinking my next Zoom call with my my company, you know, with colleagues, I could have my talking alpaca show up on Zoom. I just have to figure out how to do it. But that would be really fun. Oh my God, that would be hysterical to be a fly on the wall for that one, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've been thinking about taking, I mean, it's almost like a little ad, but it's just, you know, I just did it myself, but I've been thinking even about putting it on the social media. I might, because I've showed it to a few people. They think it's hysterical to see the talking alpaca on the cover of our book. Um, yeah, maybe I'll put it up on my Twitter or Instagram just for fun. But I think that's such a fun idea, having animals just show up. Like that newscaster, uh, there was one I saw, he, he, I guess they had the cameraman outside uh, filming through his, his window, and then the newscaster was inside. And then his dog came up to the windowsill and put his face right into the camera lens. It was really funny. I, loved all, I love all of those uh, newscaster and weatherman videos that have mm -hmm. been posted. Um, 
So, oh, speaking about work, like work whoops, we have uh, a whole chapter of those in Laughter is the Best Medicine, which is fun because there's a lot of good teasing that goes on at companies. And there was one story where I can imagine it happening, but it's just, it's so extreme. It's, um, it's story 51 and it's called The Klutz. And it's written by Julie DeBell. And she says that she had a colleague at work named Marcel and she invited him and his family to come over for a barbecue. And Marcel warned her that his wife was, you know, the queen of klutz. But Julie couldn't believe that his wife could be as bad as he said. So anyway, they came over. And the first thing that happened was Marcel's wife tripped over the first step coming up the stairs into their house. But, you know, that could happen to anybody. Um, then the wife was reaching to take a jeans jacket that uh, Julie was lending her because it was a little chilly outside. And she knocked over like all the plastic glasses that they had, every single one. And then as she Aww. tried to pick them up, she stepped on them and cracked them all. So Julie went into the house and brought out some glass glasses. And then at dessert time, um, Julie carried out this huge cake that Marcel's wife had brought. It was covered with whipped cream and fruit. So Julie carried it out thinking, I'm going to be safe with this cake. And then, you know, half the cake was still left. And so Marcel's wife insisted on carrying the cake back inside, even though Julie tried to stop her. And so she was carrying this platter with this whipped cream cake on it and marched up the back steps of their patio, missed the landing, tumbled headfirst. The cake flew everywhere and exploded all over their back deck, including their screen door. I mean, can you imagine whipped cream in the screen? Oh, their no. kitchen window. They had to get out a hose and hose everything down. And Marcel looked at... Um, Julian said, I warned you, but then it gets even better than that. So then oh no, they're leaving, right? So Marcel and his wife and kids are leaving and, um, and Julie reminds Marcel's wife, oh, you're wearing my jeans jacket. So Marcel's wife unbuttons the jacket while they're chatting. And then she pulls the jacket off and Julie's like, wait, what am I seeing? I'm seeing the woman's underwear and her bra the woman while she was chatting and unbuttoning the jeans jacket unbuttoned her entire dress oh no and then when she pulled the jeans jacket off her whole dress came off with it and she was standing there in her underwear and her kids were just cringing <laughs> and Marcel's oh, wife just said oh my <laughs> it was just so funny <laughs> Oh my goodness. You know, and it's funny because we all know somebody like that who's a little predisposed to like they're they're a, a lightning rod for disaster. We'll just put it that way. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, the best is the stories where people are making fun of themselves. And I found as I was editing this Laughter is the Best Medicine book, I I must have sounded like a crazy woman sitting in my office because I was just laughing out loud, even when I had read a story three or four times already, because I read them to select them. I read them to put them in chapters. I read them to edit them. Um, I, I started the book with a story that um, was actually very suspenseful, even though it's a humor book. Um, it's about this woman, um, Jennifer Vial, and she was home alone. Her husband was at work and her dogs were outside. So she was all alone in the house and she was in the bathroom and you know how if your bathroom fan is starting to go, it gets really, really loud. So the bathroom fan was super loud and, um, and she thought, Oh, I'm going to have to get that fixed. And then all of a sudden she, you know, over the noise of the fan, she heard this thudding against the bathroom door. And then she could see this shadow, you know, under the crack at the bottom of the door and she was thinking, like, there's an intruder in my house. Who or what is in my house? And it kept thudding against the door. And then she's like, I need, I need some kind of weapon. But she, the only weapon she could find in this bathroom was a hair clip. 
you know, with the little, like a barrette with the little metal piece. So she picks up the barrette um, with her, like a little dagger and she's holding it like she's in psycho or something. And um, it kept thudding against the door or he kept thudding against the door. And then finally, after about five minutes, she wasn't hearing the intruder thudding against the door. Um, but she was afraid to turn off the fan to really listen because she was afraid the intruder then would know that she was there. So she finally thought, okay, the cell phone's in the next room. It's on the charger. I'm going to run and grab it and call 911 before he gets me. And um, she cracked open the door holding her little barrette dagger and she peers out. And what does she see but her Roomba vacuum now quiet, stuck under, you know, the bottom slat of a wood chair outside her bathroom. <laughs> well, hey, do you know what? She's a really good person. Should there ever be an intruder, though, you know? <laughs> <laughs> she's with her barrette dagger. <laughs> yeah, she's going to get them, you know? But, <laughs> You know, there's so many funny things that, you know, in the laughter is the best medicine in this new chicken soup for the soul um, book. I mean, I was reading them and laughing out loud and, you know, what a great gift that is. Because I think we, like I said earlier, we all need a little bit of laughter and things are so serious and so difficult right now. We need a little bit of a way of, you know, finding some positive or some funny moments if even for ourselves personally, as we're going through all of this. It's true. And one of the things that I learned, um, I made a book a few years ago with Dr. Mike Dow, um, and he is a mental health therapist and is, uh, you know, he has, he has a PhD in psychology and he's really good about this stuff. And he was saying in this book we made together that it's okay to feel joy at the same time as you feel sorrow. There's nothing wrong with that. So it's okay to find a reason to laugh and to carve out that time during your day, even if you know people who are ill or people who have lost their jobs or people who haven't seen their family members in a long time and feel isolated, whatever it is, and all the bad stuff that's out there it is truly okay to also share those funny moments. I mean, there's a reason why everybody says, you know, there's a fine line between tragedy and comedy. And I think it's what makes us humans, the ability to find laughter, even in the midst of the worst of the downs that accompany, you know, the ups in our lives. I remember when my mother died three and a half years ago, I basically turned up to a, into a, I turned into a stand-up comedian doing her eulogy at the funeral. And I started feeling guilty while I was standing up there because I was making so many jokes and people were laughing hysterically, but people need that release, you know, and people said, that's the best funeral I've ever been to. And I thought, yeah. thank you, I think, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it's, it really is so important. And I think even, you know, doctors have proven there are health benefits to laughing it relieves stress. It, I, I don't remember if cortisol is good or bad, but whatever it is, it affects that the proper, in the proper manner. You know, laughter has a chemical response in your body that makes you healthier, improves your immune system, et cetera. So yeah, even if somebody is really going through a tough time right now, I think, it, I think reading some, turning off the news and reading some funny stories instead. It's a really good idea. I know it's helped me a lot. I mean, it's not easy being a publisher in this environment. I mean, we put out our Mother's Day book on March 17th, which is basically the day when most bookstores in the English speaking world closed. And guess when they reopened? Right after Mother's Day. So we had tens of thousands of copies of our Mother's Day book imprisoned in closed stores for the exact wrong time from the day of publication to mother's day. You know, that was rough. There's been a, yeah. and we, we, we took a couple of our books that were planned for this year and we actually slid them over to 2021, even though they were finished because it's tough putting books out into an environment where people are either not in the stores or worried about jobs or, you know, focused on buying other things right now, things that they consider to be more essential. So uh, I am very grateful that laughter is the best medicine 
has been so well received. Um, and it's a tribute to the fact that it is what people need right now. I guess laughter is just as essential as toilet paper these days. Um, I'm sure it is. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm sure it is, you know, because I mean, it is just, it's been tough. It has really been tough for a lot of people. And I think finding those little moments where we can, you know, check out of the news and just kind of find a, a just a moment to, you know, switch our focus into a happy place. You know, we're all looking for that because, you know, this is going to be going on, you know, it looks like for a little while. We're not, I don't see us coming to another portion of this, you know? I know. I mean, yeah. I mean, we run a business and uh, we're very aware of that because we see the numbers and we know what's going on and it's pretty scary and we don't know how long it's going to go on and then whether there's going to be another wave. So yeah, it's people have, I guess people know that they have this human need for some entertainment and some diversion Luckily, this summer in July, we're putting out two really great books that, again, will be more entertainment than anything else. You know, normally Chicken Soup for the Soul books are really good for you, right? In terms of like tips, advice, how to use the power of gratitude, the power of forgiveness, you know, all of these life changing things that you sit and you think seriously about them and you're like, I'm going to try that advice. But the laughter book is just fun. And then in July, we're putting out Chicken Soup for the Soul, The Magic of Cats. And a week later, Chicken Soup for the Soul, The Magic of Dogs. Again, just great entertainment. So I'm really glad that we've, by luck, hit the portion of our publishing schedule that is so freeing and liberating and entertaining. Well, you know, I, I think we all need to support each other during this period and what a better way to support not just publishers and authors, but bookstores as well by buying books and supporting booksellers, you know, such as Chicken Soup for the Soul. You know, Amy, where can our listeners connect with you and learn more about all the great Chicken Soup for the Soul books and be part of your community? So you can follow us on Twitter and our handle is at chicken soup soul. And that's the same for Instagram. You can, you can do Facebook chicken soup for the soul has, I guess, over 2 million Facebook fans. And then at Amy Newmark will get you me on Twitter. And I ostensibly have an Instagram account, but I don't pay any attention to it. And then you can go to our website, chicken soup.com and there you can see laughter is the best medicine and you'll actually be able to see the front cover and the back cover and really get a sense of what's in the book and our other upcoming books. Um, the other cool thing we have, and this could be very good for people who are spending more time at home is we actually have a really large entertainment business now and we offer uh, free television and movies. We have a we have streaming services. Our largest one is called Crackle, and that is a joint venture with Sony. We also have um, popcorn flicks and some other streaming channels, but we are one of the largest providers of streaming services now. So you know there's Netflix and Amazon Prime and Disney and Apple TV and all of those ones that are the paid streaming services where you would pay for a monthly subscription. And then there are the advertiser supported ones where over the course of an hour, you'll see a few ads and that's what crackle and popcorn flicks are. So that's why we have, you know, original productions, new movies, television shows. In fact, right now on crackle, we have a movie that we just got. It's called cooped up. It's Australian. And it's about a guy and it wasn't, this is just a coincidence, but it's about a guy who was exposed to a really bad coronavirus and ends up having to quarantine. And he's like the only guy in Australia who's having to quarantine from this coronavirus. And so he's cooped up at his childhood home with no TV, no internet, no anything. Um, and there's a doctor who comes to check on him regularly. Of course, romantic comedy ensues 
Um, but it's really cute. And it's just so funny. This movie, of course, was made before we were all cooped up by coronavirus. But anyway, it's called Cooped Up. It's free. It's free to watch on Crackle, which is crackle.com. So that's another cool form of entertainment that Chicken Soup for the Soul has for you right now. Oh my goodness. That's so awesome. Well, my, you know, Amy, we could talk for hours. I always love spending time with you. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Well, thank you for having me on. We haven't talked for a while and I was so excited to see you on my schedule. And um, I will get in touch with you about some of these future books also, because we've got some fun ones coming out. Well, thank you, Amy. It's been such a delight to spend this time with you and to talk about your new Chicken Soup for the Soul book, Laughter is the Best Medicine. Again, if you'd like to connect with Amy and learn more about the Chicken Soup for the Soul series, you can visit chickensoup.com for more information. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. You're listening to Moments with Marianne. And remember, make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Mary Ann airs every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmaryann.com for more information.